What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie, and today we're going to be talking about the Visconti Van Gogh. Uh, <laughs> I've used a Visconti Van Gogh pen, oh gosh, many, 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 many years ago, but I completely forgot what it was like. Uh, and I rewatched the video, which was super painful to watch. Uh, but I rewatched it anyways to get my thoughts. Um, and for the most part, they're actually pretty similar. Um, the biggest difference is that the Van Gogh that I originally reviewed way back in the day, uh, I purchased with my own money, had very high expectations for, uh, because it was the first Visconti pen that I ever bought. This one I did not pay for. This was sent to me for the purposes of review. I will be returning it uh, to Emmy from PenVenture, so thank you for loaning this to me so that I could essentially re-review it many years later with much more experience under my belt. Uh, so before I get into the thoughts, let's just jump into what it looks like. So at the top of the cap, uh, you have the Visconti V which is pretty standard among all of these pens. Uh, this one obviously has gold trim. If it was silver, it would look silver, uh, but there's nothing too fancy about it. Um, but what is kind of fancy and pretty standard across all of their pens is their Visconti clip, uh, which is of course modeled after the Ponte Vecchio bridge uh, and it is spring loaded. So it's pretty nice as far as its smooth action goes. Uh, and then this just has Visconti embossed on both sides of the lid. Uh, it's really, really, really well done. And then you've got a big chonky band around the end of the cap here. It says Van Gogh and then Visconti Italy. Uh, and then you have the multifaceted side here, which is really, really pretty. It's hard to show on camera, um, but it is much deeper looking material in real life. Uh, really cool thing about this is it is a metal cap. It does tend to catch sometimes if you don't get it just right. Uh, and did I say metal cap? Magnetic cap is what I meant to say. So sometimes like here, it's not perfectly aligned so it doesn't close all the way. You just gotta twist it to get that snap. But more often than not, you do get it to snap right away, uh, which of course I didn't there either. <laughs> uh, and then the body is pretty much the same as the cap. And of course, because it's my house, there's a Parker hair on it. And then you got a little metal knob at the end. There's really no fancy, no fancy name. Just, just a knob. <laughs> Take the cap off. You have a metal grip, uh, which people will either have a love or hate relationship with. Uh, I don't mind it. Um, it doesn't become slippery to me. I do have very dry hands, but if you do have really, really wet hands, wet hands, that's kind of gross, moist hands, whatever you want to call it, uh, it may become a bit slippery for you. There's a little lip here to stop your hands, but not like, you know, a tremendous amount. Um, but what I like about it is it does front weight the pen because all of this is just resin and this is not enough metal to have extra weight at the back. Uh, so it really puts all the weight in the front of the pen, which makes it really nice when you write because um, you basically have to use like no pressure. Uh, one thing that does irritate me though, and this bothers me across all pens that do this, uh, is this little step down here. I really, really do not like this at all because when you dip the pen into a bottle of ink, uh, this just becomes a reservoir for it. And I don't like having to clean it out because it takes an extra minute, which sounds, you know, like complaining, which it kind of is, but I just don't like it. Uh, and then you unscrew the body to reveal the cartridge uh, or converter rather, um, but you can use Visconti cartridges. This one does come branded, which is kind of fancy. Um, I have Robert Oster Saguaro Green in here, which is a Pen Chalet exclusive. Uh, and there's a little bit of metal for the threading in here. Uh, which makes it really, really smooth when you thread that, which is nice. You can post it. It's still comfortable when posted. I don't like it uh, because I prefer the weight to be all at the front, but if you have much larger hands or you just like to have your pens posted, that is something you can do there too. 
The nib itself uh, is a steel nib, has Van Gogh embossed on the front, with Visconti, and this is a broad, although for Visconti, this is more like a fine medium, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but this is supposedly a broad, and then has a plastic feed. But let's start writing, shall we? It's very smooth, pretty wet, very stiff. So you can squeak out some line variation, but that's mostly just like extra ink pooling. It's not really like opening the tines too much. It is a very stiff nib. Uh, you don't really feel any shock absorber, you know, feeling uh, like you would on like, let's say a, a Pilot Custom 74. Um, but that's really not what this pen is meant for. Uh, this writes pretty similarly, I would say in feel to the way um, a Twisby writes for how hard the nib feels, but it is much smoother in, in my opinion. Uh, than a Twisby is. Twisbees seem to have a bit more feedback, uh, and this does not. It writes really, really well, like really well. Even the reverse writing is really smooth. You do run out of ink though, but I mean, it's reverse writing. Uh, this says it's abroad. But in my experience with uh, how like Twisby's or Twisby's, oh my goodness, Visconti usually writes, um, I would say this is probably closer to a medium. If I can write an M, I don't know. Um, so yeah, do I recommend this pen? I think so. I, I quite like it. Um, it is still more expensive than your average fountain pen would be. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. You can buy a few pens. Well, you can buy, you can buy a ton of pens, but you can buy a, a few really quality pens, uh, for the price of this one, but it's a, uh, nice way to kind of get into the Visconti brand if you want to try it out rather than making the jump straight into something, uh, that's, you know, really, really expensive like their, you know, homo sapien line. Um, of course, this has a gold nib, this is a vacuum filler, you know, X, Y, Z. There's, there's lots of different factors that explain that price jump, but it's still a nice way to get in there without having to spend the kind of coin that you would on this. So up to you. Have you used the Visconti Van Gogh? If you have, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of it. Uh, and while you're down there, you might as well hit that like button and the subscribe. I make videos every Monday and Friday and the occasional Tuesday. Uh, and if you check out the description, you will find the link to my Patreon if you would like to help support me like so many others do. Uh, but regardless of whether you can jump onto Patreon or not, just by watching this video, especially if you've made it this far in, you are the reason I make these videos. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye.